So we have Fisher. Save. No. So we actually we spared that part. Um, and let me show you what that looks like in the axial. So, so just looking at it, you know, like this, this looks like one big continuous black blob, right? You wouldn't necessarily know to spare that unless you're looking in, in the other uh, uh, views and, and, you know, you're considering that. So, so the, our, our rule of thumb has been if the lesion goes up to the sulcus, then save, save the sulcus. Don't draw in that black part. If the lesion extends across, so if, if this bit was damaged, there was something that like clearly cut in there, then we would extend it through the through the sulcus. Yes. Um, can you draw lesions um, on uh, while doing the, the side view? Yeah, sure. No problem. Um, makes it you know obviously the images are then smaller, but yeah, you can you know draw. So that's the Sylvian Fisher, uh, and that's so. This is maybe I should show you that in the other view as well, just so. You, I, I this I I guess I'm sort of dwelling on the Sylvian Fisher because it's probably more important for um, for our language research. But well, all the images all the images get smaller. So I, so you'll see, um, so you see the pen tool is actually smaller. Like it's harder to sort of distinguish one voxel from another um, when you kind of just put it in axial. Um, I mean, you can only draw on one of these yeah, three at, at a time anyway. One, yeah. Like anyway. And you know, you're only drawing on what you like. It would be kind of crazy to do something like you, know, you can't even do do across panels, right? So. Right. So um, anyway, I was just going to show you the Sylvian oh, Fisher. Here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So, um, so this doesn't simultaneously update uh, the other view. It yeah, it does. It does, but you can only draw in one at a time. Right, right, right. Oh, okay. So. Okay, great. So anyway, this is the Sylvian Fisher here, separating the temporal lobe. From the frontal lobe, you can see it's it's one of the bigger ones where you know a slice like that you're like whoa there's a big hole there but it's it's natural it's supposed to be there um, so it's something you have to look out for it. Um, another thing that can happen is partial volume averaging. So if a slice occurs, if it goes through tissue but the uh, voxel beneath it is CSF, it can discolor. The, it sort of averages the signal, and you can get sort of a discoloration. Um, and I'm not sure if I have a good example of that. Uh, but, the, but the important thing to do there is uh, when you see a lesion, it should be on more than one slice. That's critical. Um, you want to check above, check below, make sure that it's, it's really there. Um, and that should take care of partial volume averaging. Uh, okay, so enlarged ventricles. You remember our friend, the French civil servant. Um, these are what normal ventricles look like. Um, these little holes here. When you have a stroke, you have less tissue there to contain these, and, and they just sort of, you know, balloon into the into the into the newly opened space. Um, That's yeah uh, yeah right. So this is a, a natural process that that happened. Uh, let's see if I open no. ventricles. All right. So you can see that this one on the side here is much bigger than this one on, and that's be just because this tissue's gone and it it sort of balloons into that. So one person might say, well, look, this tissue that was on this side is now not on this side. You know, so let's, let's you know, draw the ventricle, you know, since, it, since it, there should be tissue here, you know, you might extend like that. And some people do that. That's, a, that's a, a thing that people do. We don't. We just go straight up to the ventricle like this. 
Um, and that's handled through the word. Yeah. Right. So the basic template then doesn't accommodate the changed ventricle size. It does. It does. So the um, and and we'll we'll hear more about the warp, and that's actually so that's one of the reasons why we go up to it. So what the the warp does it, as I understand it, um, my sort of naive view, it it takes sort of landmarks that it that it can recognize, right? So like you're like, oh, this is a healthy ventricle, um, and it can say, oh, this should be a ventricle, but it's not matching, right? And so. It, it's kind of it'll take this and it smushes it to make it fit the column brain, right? So then once you get the the amount of squishing needed to make this ventricle match the normal ventricle, you then apply that to the lesion mask and it it stretches it the same amount so that when you then put it on, it should also extend right up to the ventricle on the uh, but it'll you know of course extend extend further. It stretches it. And this is, and this is, um, I think, one of the real benefits of the warp is that um, let's say that there was this little bit of cortex here. Uh, let me see. Okay, yeah. So, so here, um, if you want to spare this bit that doesn't quite go up to the ventricle, um, you know, you can just draw it like that, and and the computer will tell you exactly how far that should be. Um, in, in when you're doing it without the warp, just transferring it, you kind of you eyeball it. You kind of estimate. Well, there's this much stuff left, so I'll try to leave that much stuff. Um, it's a difficult process. Greg, you talked a little bit about sort of the, the comparing, you know, the, the, the damaged hemisphere to the impact yeah. hemisphere, but a tricky thing is that the, this is not necessarily sort of, the, the scan is not sort of parallel. Right. Can you talk a little bit about sure, sure. how you try to do So you can, uh, yeah, so, so you can see that uh, a little bit with this guy. One of the way, real easy ways to tell that is by looking at the eyeballs. Do the eyeballs come into view as you scroll through? Are the eyeballs level? Um, if they're not, then they're tilted one way or the other. And, that, and this guy is, or, or girl um, is actually uh, fairly well, pretty well lined up, actually. Um, but yeah, it, it is possible. I, ha I think I have an example of that later, where you know. You, it's, it makes it more difficult then to look, you know, because you're looking at different landmarks on one side or the other. The orientation, right? Right. Right. You have to sort of adjust your, you know, you kind of have to go up and down to to figure out if, if on one side on it's one comparable side. to the other. It's really good. You could rotate it. You could rotate it. Um, Yeah, I don't think so. So, um, yeah, I, I, so that that is definitely one of the pitfalls of the um, method of compare, you know, left to right, which is I, I think why it's it's so important to sort of get a handle on the neuroanatomy and be able to kind of tell where you are, you know, that and that you're not, you know, one side is perhaps not identical to the other. So. But in any case, so this is something to look out for. In large ventricles, we get, you can usually you can see this ventricle wall here, and you just draw right up to it. I mean, you want to include that wall because that is neural tissue. Um, next thing, atrophy of cortex and peduncles. Um, atrophy. Okay. One of the things that will happen in stroke um, is that you're getting a part of your brain dies and another part is now not getting input from, from that. So that part will start to shrink because it's not getting the, the input that it needs. So if you look at the right side here, see how these gyri are nice and juicy and go all the way out. And then here they're kind of, eh, um, they're pretty, let's see if I can find a better slice here. So, yeah, if you compare these temporal lobes here, right? These are nice, big, thick gyri on the right. Very, you know, kind of thin, weak ones on the left. Um, so the question is right. So if you look over, let's see. If, so is that actually a lesion there? Right, okay, so that's a good one. So this thing right here, right, you don't get that at all over here. 
that's Sylvian Fisher. That's totally normal, which is kind of surprising. Just looking, you know, if you're just doing a left-right compare, right, this right here, that looks like lesion. But if you look in the other view, look, it's just right in the back of the Sylvian Fisher here. It's totally normal. It's just atrophy. Um, and we don't, well, not normal, but it's, it's not lesion. Um, and again, this is something that some people would say is, is a problem, is pathological, you know, that area is not working the way it should. Um, we don't do that. We say, you know, that's atrophy. Maybe it's not working the way it should. Maybe it is. We don't really know. Um, we're sort of remaining ambivalent about that. Um, and so what we are trying to do is just get this focal stroke. Another thing um, where you will see atrophy it, whoops, it's in the peduncles here, and, that, and we don't trace those at all. So these are the peduncles, these little Mickey Mouse ears here, right there. Um, and that is, these things, this is the major output of your brain to the rest of your body, right? All the signals from your brain being sent to your body are, the vast majority of them are being sent through these two cables, you know, out through your spinal cord. Um, when you have damage up here, right, all those connections that are running down die, and you get, you know, some, let me uh, put this in axial. So you get something that looks like, uh, yeah, lesions, huh? Uh, so on the right here, you can see this is nice and full. This one's, you know, kind of, you know, it looks crummy on the left, but that's because it, it is crummy. Um, but the point is, is that these are not things that we're trying to highlight as uh, damage to your computational system. This is, these, like, this is really just like a, a fiber cable running out of your brain that goes out to your body. We don't expect that that has um, you know, an impact on your cognition. So these are not, and, and these are sort of things that are uh, like atrophy. It's secondary to the, to the main problem, which is that you have this hole in your brain, in the actual you know, neural tissue there. I guess that is neural tissue too, but. Um, Yeah, VBM. Yeah. I've never heard of anything, I mean, but. I know VBM is used in dementia, so not brain injury, other things like that. But brain Okay, so that takes care of atrophy. Just got um, three more here. Okay, periventricular white matter disease. Um, this is a weird one, I think, um, because it it uh, it's not entirely clear what the impact of this is. It's still sort of debated at, at conferences and in the literature what what this stuff actually is. It's um, let me uh, there it is. So, so what happens is, you know, normally have, um, you know, white matter, and it looks white under most conditions in, in these scans, um, but not always. It, so, see how, see this darkening over here? It looks a lot like over here. It looks like stroke or something, um, and it turns out that this is very common. It happens usually around the ventricles, hence periventricular, um, and it's very common in old, older people. Um, and you know you may have this and, and and never have any symptoms. You know may never bother you. Um, there are some studies that show that it does have impact on on cognitive abilities, but it's not really clear exactly what that impact is. Um, so we ignore it for the most part. the The trick, though, is that if you so, this is obviously uh, going to have to be taken into account when you're comparing the left side to the right side. And in this case, what we don't want to call periventricular capping, uh, rather, we don't want to call periventricular uh, white matter disease lesion, because it's over here. So 